Organic doesn't mean chemically free. Yeah, sorry to be the bearer of bad news, but it is the truth. What it does mean is regulated inputs of specific origin and quantity with rules applied. In today's video, we're going to look at exactly what chemicals can be used in the organic world. And this will help you be able to speak intelligently with other people about this, whether it's from the seed buying perspective. So you're purchasing organic tomato seeds that can technically still be sprayed with stuff. Or if you're going to the grocery store and you're shopping for organic, is it something you want to spend your bucks on? If you know that that crop oftentimes is sprayed with XYZ chemical, which we will go through. Let's put a definition to organic where a definition currently doesn't exist or more education behind it anyways. So I think organic is normally kind of coincided in our brain with natural or not interfered with. But that's not the truth when it comes to agriculture. If you don't know who I am, my name's Ashley. I have a bachelor's of science in soil science, and my background is in agriculture. And my thesis, actually, oddly enough, was about organic versus conventional farming practices and the effects it had on soil. But regardless of that, I can tell you with absolute confidence that the definition of organic in an intensive food producing operation does not mean natural or untouched. What it does mean is it is a system. It is an organic system. And there are rules, regulations, tactics that are used in that system that you need to determine for yourself and for your family whether or not it's something you want to buy into. So first off, I think chemical has kind of got a bad rap. It is emotionally loaded comment. But the truth is that chemical doesn't just refer to mustard gas. It could also reference things like caffeine, capsaicin, nicotine, all of which are plant-based chemicals. The focus needs to be on the toxicity of said dosage and then the persistence of that chemical in that plant up into the grocery shelves themselves. So the legal definition for organic inputs is essentially items that are regulated or approved by the governing body of that area. So Europe has much different rules than the U.S. The U.S. has different rules than Canada, New Zealand, Australia. We kind of all navigate this differently, which is, again, why it's a system and not a very strict, untouched version of farming like we all thought it was. So a really great example of this is copper fungicides. Copper is an organic fungicide that can be and is used in organic farming. It's also actually used in conventional farming as well because it is so powerful and so useful to the producer. The two most common are copper sulfate and copper hydroxide. And this is a heavy metal. We know it's a heavy metal and it is not degraded. So it is not plants, soil, microbes can't degrade this. They can't consume it and make it into something smaller because it is kind of at its base already. So as it is applied to the plant, the dosage of it just climbs. And again, it's used for both bacterial and fungal purposes. So what that means is that if a plant is applied with copper and then a new crop is put on the following year and that one gets some copper, and then you kind of get the idea, it actually builds up in the soil. So organic, I think it's really important for us to realize this. It does not mean by any stretch of the imagination, environmentally friendly. This copper can and will accumulate in the soil over time. This is why I encourage people to garden because it is much, much gentler on the environment when you do do it from home. Next one is actually sulfur. So sulfur is used quite often for mildews. So I have said to use it for powdery mildew. It also can be used for some insects, such as mites. It is naturally occurring, but it can be toxic in high doses. And if it's misused, it can damage plants. However, it isn't going to accumulate in the soil in the same way. And oftentimes it's best applied as a powder or kind of as a smoke, if you will. 
So that is very commonly used in the gardening industry. And I think it's probably one that you really don't have to be worried about. Next up is neem oil. So this one is one of those organic pesticides that some countries allow and other countries do not allow. And the reason for that is because it is called a persistent or a systemic pesticide. What that means is once it's applied to the plant, it is on the plant. And the plant then actually soaks that neem oil up into its system. And that makes it kind of taste icky to any bugs that go to eat it. It is considered a bioactive compound. And once this plant is then composted, that neem oil ends up in your compost or in the field. And then it's just kind of recycled through the system. Over time, pests become resistant to it, so it's not as effective. And you actually do need PPA to breathe in. It is not something you want to lick your hands after applying. It is not a nice chemical. It can be quite nasty in high doses. Spinosad. So this one is actually probably one of the worst organic compounds you can apply. It is used for thrips and it is used for caterpillars. This stuff is highly toxic to pollinators, like mega deadly. And its origin is actually a soil bacterium. So we're taking something that naturally is in the soil, very stable, very on the ground, putting it into a spray bottle and then spraying it on our plant via usually like a, a sprayer in the world of agriculture or in your garden, hand sprayer, whatever the case is. But again, very highly toxic to pollinators, but, but completely organic. So that's good. One thing that's important to note with all of these organic chemical, organic chemicals that can be applied to your plants is that they are unbiased. They don't have a precision attack. They will take on whatever it's applied to. So that copper is applied to the soil. So it's doing its dirty to any sort of fungi that's in the soil, your mycelium, cyanara, sulfur. It's going to harm your bacteria, beneficial or bad. It does both. Neem, it's going to harm or deter the beneficial guys and the good guys. Obviously, spinosad, again, is another one that, that will do dirty to both, good and bad. And this is where the controversy comes in because conventional is very targeted. So it will target a very specific issue and only that issue on that plant. And then if it, it generally, they'll test it to see first, but generally speaking, it doesn't have any sort of downstream effects because of that targeted approach. Does that mean it's right or healthy or anything? I'm not commenting on that. I don't know. But what I can say is that if you got something for grasshoppers in the synthetic world, it's taking out the grasshoppers. It's going to do nothing to the Bertha, Bertha armyworm, if you will. So, although there are several, usually pollinators, that are affected by all pesticides, normally speaking. So the question becomes, is this safe for humans? And the answer to that is that it is completely dependent on the dosage and what's still remaining on the plants themselves. So even if something is organic, it's still really important that you wash it because if it has any of these chemicals being used on it in higher doses, it could make you sick eventually one day. So always wash your fruits and vegetables regardless of if it's synthetic or organic, unless it's from your garden. Dirt and all goes in your mouth, no questions. It's also really important to note that if you go to compost anything that you've purchased that is organic, if it's been applied with copper or sulfur or any of these chemicals that don't degrade and are stuck in situ and you compost it, it will eventually build up in your soil now. Is that an enormous amount? I don't know. It, I don't know how much you're eating or what you're doing with your food. So that is completely something for you to determine. But it is something that I do want to say in case there is a person out there that for whatever reason has access to a metric buttload of organic grains that are no good and are constantly composted and they're compost. Just something to think about. But Geek Crew, you have to let me know in the comments down below if this is something that you concern yourself with, if you just buy what is on sale and not necessarily what is organic versus conventional, if you're organic only. Do you grow everything from your garden and don't grocery shop at all? I'd be interested to know the answer to that. So Google says to watch because they know everything, even what you think at night. And this is my most recent video. I don't know if it's good or not as determined by you. So I'll talk to you guys later. Bye.